the World Claim Church of Christ in Lumber, Texas. This is Sunday, February 7, 2021. Our evening message, a false message from hell, just as it is taught on earth. A false message from hell, just as it is taught on earth. A text Luke 16, 19 through 31. We have to understand there's a big push of the idea the word of God is not sufficient to save souls. The lie is we need something more than God's word because it cannot stand alone. We see and hear Luke tell us the truth is the word of God is sufficient. God's word can and does stand alone and will not give its glory to any other writing. And we're going to listen to the Father explain why this comes from the Old Testament. And you know, today, earlier, we were discussing in the Bible class, Brother Kevin did an excellent job get that particular message from earlier today. Brother Frizz is so timely and hustling up, and even with equipment that may be faulty, he gets that message of real swift and God bless him God bless him and we understand that uh, you know we see a lot of writings in the Bible but say if we want to always be fair and cautious in teaching and that's the thing brother Kevin was trying to help us to understand in the lesson he was teaching and he did an admirable job and you know and I'm just going to keep encouraging us. There are a lot of stories like the story that came up in Bible study. You always, it's amazing to me, I remember even as a child hearing it. You always hear about David and how he hid and missed and after Bathsheba he struggled, he hid and missed, he hid and missed. Did a lot of good things and some very awful things. It became kind of inconsistent. He even says at the end of his life, that for a man to lead, he has to be right with God to put it in summary. He says he has to stay right. He said, now my house not like that. He said, but God gave me mercy. He says, gave me mercy. David knew his house had gotten tore up from the floor, like we say. But we forget Bathsheba was a part of that house. She experienced and saw Absalom what he did to David, her man, her husband. And yeah, David had all the women, but she was a part of the house because they're all a part of David's house. And uh, she realized as it happened, she was a, she's the reason those things were happening. The things she had did. But you only hear for some, it's something so weird about that story. You always hear about, it's like Bathsheba went to Mars or something after that. You just, you don't hear saints talk. It's like she didn't do anything wrong. You almost hear saints pushing that David might, you know, she just couldn't say no. It's like, it's like, you know, brethren, that's, keep remembering, she is a 50% partner and a 100% sin. She's, she's evil. She's a wicked, wicked woman. We don't hear, we do see her teaching her son. Now, that is good mention of her, and I've taught her before. She teaches her son about laws. But you know, that's, I want to share something with you. There's a lot of saints that teach their children how to live right, but they don't live right. Y'all got me? I'm not talking about nobody specific. Everybody relax. What I'm saying is, just because she taught Solomon good stuff, does still has to say, we don't know if Bathsheba ever truly repented or thought she had done wrong. We don't know. We trust. And we see, infant says, she became a woman godly teaching. But there's a lot. Do you know the Pharisees, they never taught about Satan. They never taught idolatry. But they didn't live it. But we see clearly David makes an about face. But then David hits and miss too. So we see, but that's why the point out, she hits and miss. But for some reason, David is just brutalized of the story. And I want to encourage us to make sure we don't make a male leader God or Christ or the Holy Ghost. 
as a male leader is punished for sin, Bathsheba is as guilty as guilty can be. She's not a good woman in the story. She is what we call a whore by definition of the Hebrew word. She's an adulterer. She's married. Even if she was single, David's married. See, the thing you have to understand, David, being a king, just he, he has to make her a concubine. Okay? Now, that would have been okay, her being single. Could have made her a concubine or one of his queens. The problem is, the difference you have to understand in David being a king, she's married. Even if her husband had more than one woman, she's married to Uriah, the Hittite, but he didn't. That's what makes her a whore. She's an adulterer. You may say, well, what makes David so bad? You have to understand the concept, brethren. David can have girlfriends and wives. I'm sorry. To I've been telling this for last. Yeah, I was about to tell you that God didn't have a problem with that. The problem is, is this woman got a man. She is the catalyst of the sin. It's not a sin for David to have sex with any woman he wants. I'm sorry to tell us that. I'm so sorry. But a mad woman? Uh-uh-uh. And for some reason, David is like beat up on like a Z. But nobody remember, it wouldn't have been a sin if she wouldn't have been married. Because he can have girlfriends and wives. Let's make sure we teach that. Let's do like Kevin trying to tell her. Shift it to know, okay, Bathsheba is the head list on this sin. Because if she didn't have a man, it wouldn't have been no sin. As much as I'm going to say. That's what makes her a whore. David becomes a whore too because she's, it's all about her. It's all about her. I don't know how we missed that. God knows I don't. But I'm going to preach it till I die because I want to get it right. Because we have to make sure we understand God won't have no problem with punishing women. Women not above sin or reproach. Beautiful creatures. The church is linked to kin to a woman, but God threatened, I'm going to divorce Ephesus. Christ, I'm going to divorce you. Revelation 2, because you're not acting right. I don't, know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know things behind it in the world. And I've heard that story since young. But I always hear by David Day. It's like, and I began to ask questions as I became a saint and I grew in the world. I'm like, investigate this lady. I want to investigate her. See what's going on with her. I don't hear too much about her. It is what it is. See, brethren, that's no such thing as a one sinner, two sin deal. There's no such thing as that. If two involved in sin, then two are guilty in the sin. Not no one thing. I know the word whore is offensive, but God told us to use it. I know it hurts. But I'd like to see one of you sisters that's married go sleep with Joe Biden, that's the new president now. And, that, and I wonder what the other sisters would think about you. And you came in with your stomach so old, and your husband, the brother in the church say, it's not my baby, that's Biden's baby. And I'm not, I'm not criticizing Mr. Biden. I don't think he'd ever do it. But he's the king. He's like David. That's what I'm saying. Okay. He said, that's Biden's baby. Well, I just see, I, and I know, I know my brother. I know the brethren here too. Man, that wouldn't go over at all. So let's move forward. Okay, Luke chapter sixteen and verse number nineteen. We got to be real, saints. Let's not run off, saints, for our sinful lives. Own up to your sin. Claim it. Well, we're gonna name and claim. Name, claim your sin and name it. That you've committed. Cast it off. Don't hide it. Because humps stay humps on the rug till you remove it. Got to be real. Got to be real. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming soon. Thank you, Brother Robert. Jesus is coming soon. Morning, or night, or noon. Isn't that something? He just told us, didn't he? Pricked my heart. He just told us. Luke 16, 19. There was a certain rich man which was cold and purple and fine linen and fair sumptuously every day. So he was, he's living large and in charge, like we say. And there was a certain beggar. 
named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now look at his desire and desire to be fed with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and took his soul. You know what you're learning from this verse 21? It's obvious that this guy did not look out for Lazarus. He just started to give me crumbs. It would have easily said, and he got crumbs from the rich man table daily. Now you know what's wrong with the rich man. He let him sit at the gate. Maybe this enfranchising his beautiful home, but he, he obviously didn't hook him up. There's not a hook up. Why would he be desiring this? You don't desire stuff you already are you desiring salvation? Don't you already have it? That the verse 21, your story is taught. So the dogs came and helped him. Isn't that something? It didn't say, and the rich man gave him funds for medicine. Now you know why. He, now you, if you ever wanted to know why, what the hell? Verse 21. Look at 22. Came to pass that the beggar died, and he was carried by the angel Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and said, Abraham, afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And said, Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. And likewise Lazarus, evil thing. Now notice that. Notice that. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this, betwixt us and you, there is a great go fixed so that they which would pass from you, from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass us that would come from this. He says two reasons. One, you in hell because you got good stuff on earth. Now people don't get punished for having good. Because Abraham was rich. And he's in the right place. And it's obviously he didn't share. Lazarus lacked and died that way. That's why you're in hell. Two, we're not coming to get you because it's the gulf there. Nobody comes across the gulf. Then he said, now he's going to start preaching. Now in verse 27, here comes a message from hell. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Now that's his message. Send Lazarus, and he'll go and preach, and they'll know not to come out. Amen. That's his message. Now Abraham got a message. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. That's Abraham's message. Hear Moses. But he has a debate now with Abraham. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham. But if one went from the dead, they were a prince. So now he just said, You don't eat te teaching. He's teaching. He's preaching and he's teaching from hell. And the same message is taught on the earth today. He said, You got to send somebody from hell to go talk to him. And they'll repent. Abraham says, no, the, the word is enough. He says, the word is enough. And he said unto them, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Can we validate that? Yeah. Who came from the dead? I believe his name is Jesus Christ. Do you see everybody knocking down the door to get baptized? They don't believe one came from the dead. I thought Abraham said, no, it's going to be about the word, man, which you didn't listen to. So he says, they are Moses and the prophets. Will we let us know this story that is being told is still under the mosaical dispensation. He says, Moses and the prophets. He say nothing about apostle, New Testament, Moses and the prophets. That's how we can lock this story under Moses and the prophets. Mosaical dispensation. That means that book is still valid. The Old Testament. It is enough to save souls. It is enough to save souls. It's wonderful. That tells a lot. A message from hell that's still taught today. One of the reasons God said is I'm not sharing my glory with anybody. He's saying my words. God said they're enough. Not the apocrypha. No. 
not the Sanskrit, not the Quran. No. Or no other right. Not Hammurabi's code of ethics or whatever. Mm -mm. My word. He said, I don't share. So let's see. Isaiah 42 and 6. He said, I'm not giving my glory to nobody else. Isaiah 42 and verse number 6. You know what I'm finding about the word of God? And I'm putting it on me first. I'm putting it on me first. Is that it challenges you. It checks you. It tells you. You need to examine. You're not what you thought you are. Are you all what you thought you are? You got a little strength. Are you all what you thought you are? But you broke. But you still mind. It, it challenges. It comes to you. The word of God. And you have people all day talking, man, amen. But amen. But one thing I find out, if I don't live it, if you don't live it, it's, it's vain. Christ died for nothing concerning you or me. Because it doesn't save. So Isaiah 42 and 6. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness. And will hold thine hand and will keep thee. And give thee for a covenant of the people. For a light of Gentiles. You and I are a light to the Gentiles. Jesus reemphasized the New Testament. The world is pitch black. Dark is so dark. It's so thick. You can feel the darkness, the sin around, just like they felt it uh, in Egypt. And that light, when you walk into the room, everybody can see. The sinner runs to the corners of the room because I like the dark, because I'm still naked. So John says he doesn't want to come to the light. So, to open the blind eyes, so it opens blind eyes. To bring out the prisoners from prison. So that light is like going in a dungeon. And saying hey you want to come out. Give me your hand I'll help you out. Get him out of this prison of sin. And them that sit in darkness. Out of the prison. So you got another group. That just sit in darkness. See. You got one group of prison. You got them that sit in darkness. This is just in game of just sit there at the bottom. Murky rats everywhere. You'll get used to them. You know, you go to jail that got rats running everywhere. A guy been down already. Right You'll get used to them, boy. Because he's used to kicking them. He's used to throwing stuff at them. You know. He, he, he didn't accept it. But somebody come down and say, hey man, shine the light down. Look at all these rats. Come on, let me help you out of there. I am the Lord. That is my name. So what does that mean? Now, others that had the name Lord. The problem is, he says, I am the image of a ruler. I am the character that a ruler has. He says, I'm it. I give the word Lord its power. The rest of you all, you don't have it. I give. God gives Jesus his power. See, brother, you got to understand, and so do I. God is so awesome. You have to wonder. And I tell myself all the time. And him too. Why do you even care about me? I never figure it out. It's just got to be because you're just good. I've done nothing. I've disobeyed. It doesn't matter if you repent. It doesn't matter if you repent and do right the rest of your life. What are you going to do about what you did in the past? You can't erase it. And you knew who God was before you did it. So why would he love us? Why does he come back? Because it's just who he is. As I said, that's who I am. I'm Lord. I'm Ruth. I'm the character. I'm the authority. That's me. So we should appreciate that, brethren. I don't know what it is about us and justifying sin and sinners. It's just something about us, man. We just justify sinners. I think it makes some people mad that Joseph's even in the Bible. A young guy won't sleep with. Do you know Joseph could be a male concubine? Because his ruler, that's the woman. She rules him. Just like kings have girlfriends. He could be in the boyfriend. She wasn't going to tell you. Say she would tell. You don't know that. You don't know that. She really loved me. She wouldn't tell. You don't know that. 
I got people keep a lot of secrets. The problem is, he said, I can't do this to God. Not, not you, wicked lady. Not Potiphar, for your husband, not nobody. God. Your husband owned me like a piece of meat. God. So you can excuse a white man. You love your neighbors as yourself. But you can excuse a white man because he turns on you at some point in some area. But God. I can't do this to God, he said. That should be enough to sustain you. Your spouse should not be watching you. God. Even if you're not a Christian. God. Because God will let your marriage fall. God. Has nothing to do with nothing. About your parents watching you. God. God. About the church watching you. God. That's all. If, if, if you can get God to close his eyes. You can pull something off. Other than that. God's watching. He says, and my goal will I not give unto another, neither my praise to graven image. He said, so he says, it isn't just a graven image, that's a separate thing. But I'm not going to give my glory to nobody. Nobody. Jesus can never be God and there be no God. That glory is for, for God. He can never be God and there be no God. He's always got to be at the top. That's why Jesus said, my father's great. And I can't, I can't. Get. So whatever you see going good, Jesus said, it's not me. It's the father. He said, why call me good? It's the father. God's the catalyst. And that's why he picked Jesus. You know, he, he going to always do it right. Always. Behold, the former things are come to pass and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. He says, that's because I'm it. Now, someone say, well, yeah, well, he let the fullness dwell in Christ. Yeah, but Christ always reminds us God. Getting us prepared to serve God. So that's why he says, you know, I am God. That's why he said, I'm God. I can't let nobody else be God and I not exist. So that's what's wrong with the Pentecostal church. You can't have Jesus and no God. So in this context, he's talking about false gods or men, but Jesus made sure you and I understood when he came to earth, okay, now I'm going to let you know because he knows this text, there's somebody greater than me. Jesus knows Isaiah. He's the one who encourages them to write. He knows Isaiah. He didn't go like, Isaiah, what? Isaiah, what did he say? He didn't do that. So Christ kept it in line. He kept pointing up. That's a, that's a greater that's a greater. He's greater than I. So that's an easy one. God said my word will last forever. Look at Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 6. Isaiah 40 and 6. The voice said cry. And he said what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodness of is as a flower of the field. So all human beings is like grass. And the goodness that pops up from you is just like a flower. The grass with it. The people die. The flower faded. The glory faded. Because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. It's a, so the Lord's spirit blows. They say okay that's it for you. It's time's up for you. The grass with it. The flower faded. But the word of our God shall stand forever. So. How's somebody going to tell us there's a missing book of the Bible when the word of God stands? So, yeah, this is always the verse I go to. No, but that's not what it means. No, that's what it means. Matter of fact, friend, I love you, but I got to go. We've talked enough because you're starting to lie. You're going to make me mad. It's time to go. Verse 9, O Zion that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the sinners of Judah. Behold your God. Exclamation. He says tell them. He says tell them about me. Tell everybody what's going on man. Let them know who I am. I'm greater than you. My word doesn't disappear. So. Rich man wrong. Not enough. They need to see that. As a rich man wrong. The word of God is enough. The word of God is enough. God said my word will destroy other doctrines like a hammer and fire. Look at Jeremiah 23. 
Rich man wrong. That's why the message came straight. You heard people say straight out of comp. That message came straight out of hell. Isn't that something? And it's wrong. Jeremiah 23, 26. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Which think, now he said this in their mind. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams. Which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Bill. So they say, now they think because their father forgot my name for Bill, they're going to cause my people to forget now you got to remember something, brethren. When you see somebody deceived by a teacher to forget God's name, the Lord is saying, that was not mine. My people are not going to do it. He said, you think that. What people is he talking about? The 7,000 Elijah didn't know about. God got some people. He said, no, nah, you, 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 since you thought you was going to get them with your message, I'm going to pay you back. Oh, you're going to get some. Technically, they're mine, but they're not mine. You know, you know, listen, listen. When you got somebody you love, whether you're married to them or dating, notice from the text. We notice from the text. You see how long Rachel waited? Rachel waited for Jacob. She waited. How come she just ain't gonna get another man? She waited. When you love somebody, you have to understand. If somebody take them, it's an easy answer. They didn't love you. That's why it's at. That's why the Bible said, let them go. Let them go. See, when people say, God keep coming for them, listen, let me start something with you. The amount of times that God reached for us has nothing to do with how many times you're going to reach for somebody you're infatuated with. That's, that's, you're not God. And they're definitely not the church. It has to do with your effort, your energy, how much you want to reach for the person. You may say, oh, that can't, that's it. Cutting it here. The Lord gives it option. All right. Your call. And we, we have to understand that. They're not yours. So you shouldn't worry about buzzing me. I want no man come to sweet talking my woman. You should think that way. That's true. But if your woman not right, she going to be Bathsheba. Nah. Uh, I mean, how many of us would have been married to Bathsheba? See, see, when you bring it home, now you know what to call her. When she sin. Only when she sin. Only when she sin. You know what to call her now. See, that, see that, that's what we have to understand, brother. See, I don't have no problem saying that. I've been a whore before. Like I said, it's more, I know what one is. So, look. You have a hard time running by people like me. You know, the, the message is clear. I'm not going back either. Verse 28, the prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. You got a dream? Tell it. The Lord said, I'm not scared. You think you'll get my people? Tell your dream. The Lord tell him, bring it. Bring your dream. Like Texas was in a battle, they had to flag something to the effect, come and take it. I said, come take it. You got to come take it. And he that had my word, let him speak my word faithfully. You got to work off people. What is a child to the wheat, said the Lord. He said, listen, you don't mean nothing to me. You can bring your dream. It's not my word like as a father. What is he talking about? He said, my children that got my word, look here. They're the wheat and they got fire. They're wheat with fire. And you bring that child, to, oh, that's great. That's what we burn anyway. Oof, and put the word on it. Eat it up. Said the Lord. And like a hammer that breaking rocks and you get man. There's a whole bunch of rocks over there. Here's your hammer. Where the hammer? Oh, yeah, this is all I need. I got it. But it's rocks. That's right. I'm not going to use my hand. I'm going to use the hammer. You bust them up. That's a lot of say. You think you're going to bring a rock? You think you're going to bring a rock doctrine to my children? An imitation of Jesus? Take the hammer, child. Go get it. Now, now, the other ones that go with you, that's not the ones I expected to stay anyway. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, said the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his name. He says, I'm against you. You steal my words. I'm against you now. You think you're going to do something. I'm against you, but you're not going to get the ones that's mine. But I'm going to get you for getting the ones that were mine. So I'm going to get you. 
He says, Behold, I'm against the prophets, says the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He said. People always you know the Bible said, You go and you ask them, Really? I don't remember that in the Bible, man. You know, man, I remember one time, you know, uh, mm, I've been to some very odd funerals. You know, and uh, I remember at a funeral, a guy said something, boy, he was so confused. And Henry was there. <laughs> and I saw Henry's neck jerk back and look while he was talking. I was sitting way in the back. And when we got through, we laughed. He said, and Henry talked to him after trying to give him a call. I said, call him. He looked at me. He said, did you hear what he said? I said, I saw your neck jerk back, Henry. Mm -hmm. I said, he couldn't get it. He had two or three scriptures intermingled and a lie on top of that. I said, man, he just got up there. Just, oh, man, I'm so embarrassing. Making comments. He should have stayed sitting in his seat. But, you know, nevertheless, Henry tried to reach out and help him, you know. Once I saw that, I said, well, it is what it is, you know. Henry can help him, hopefully. Verse 32, Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not. See, they take things lightly. You don't have to go to church with the pandemic. It's light, light. And I sent them not, nor commanded them. So he said, I didn't send them because I knew he was going to lie and I definitely tell them to say that nonsense. Therefore, they shall not profit these people at all, said the Lord. So see, you won't profit them. You won't profit them. There won't be a spiritual prophet. There won't be a soul enhancement. They're going to still die lost, which is not the goal of the Lord. But his word, he said, it will stand. It's like fire and a hammer. Take the fire and the hammer with you. God said his word would bring rest. Look at Isaiah 28 verse 9. Isaiah and Jeremiah is tagging this man. Isaiah 28. Tag team like rosters. One high five another come in and body slam. Isaiah 28 9. Who shall he teach knowledge? And who shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Why? Because he says the other ones that should have known, they land in vomit. So somebody may go, well, man, if all the teachers in the spiritual vomit, who are going to teach? He says the, the new ones. Sometimes a newly baptized saint will come in. Uh, you know, and I think about uh, Brother Darrell Givens in the Fort Worth area, uh, Salem Circle Church of Christ. Brothers have. Team old brother Robert Polk and start a congregation. I gotta wait till these brothers find open the doors up. But I remember when Daryl got baptized. I remember talking to him just a few months after, and he would say, Man, I'm finding out something discouraged in the church of Christ. That's things I knew from where I came from that they don't, it's like they don't even know that much. And he said, I was lost. And I'm trying to make applications. I knew then I said, Yeah, brother, well, you definitely gonna be a soldier, no doubt about it. Front line. And he's proven that. So you take one just baptized while he's drying up with the towel. Hey, you want to serve on the table? All right, next son, he ready to go to work. He ready to go to work. Amen. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. So the, the thought that you're talking about, the context, line upon line, some scriptures down, line upon line, here a little down, little. you always find a little hill and a little down. The psalmists sing songs, but they're not the specifics of it. They don't know who it's talking about. A little is in the New Testament. Peter starts to explain Paul of what was being talked about. Peter explains what Joel was talking about. They don't know. Peter explains. So, here a little down there. For with stammering lips and another tongue will, I, will he speak to this people. To whom he said... This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they will not hear. Once again, rich man in hell, preaching from hell. Wrong act. Like they're doing a game show. Wrong answer. Because the Bible says it eats lies like fire, it busts up lies like a hammer bust rock. And also, this beautiful word that we are looking at brings rest to your soul. So what would bring rest to the five brethren? You got to do what Moses said. Y'all need to help God. Somebody go, look, y'all need to help God like Lazarus. They used to sit here. Lazarus is not coming back preaching that. How would it be taught? Love your neighbor as yourself. 
Love your neighbor as yourself. As your neighbor at the gate. So the other five, as they coming out the house, they see another sick man, they should click. I'm old enough. You know, hold on, man. Where you live, man? Where you live? Who bring you out here? I'm going to catch him in the morning. Hey, put this money in your pocket. We're going to bring, bring him some food. Tell him to bring him some food. And when the people come, find out where he lives. See when we help him. Them keep bringing him. Sending. Not that we don't want him in front of the house. It's just, man, that's bad, man. Sitting the dogs licking all like that. Remember that other dude? Dogs licking on him. You don't click like the, the Moses and the prophets. I already told you what to do. Moses and the prophets. Moses and the prophets already told Bathsheba what to do. Your husband named you Rada Hittite. Now, did you forget? Did you get Alzheimer's earlier? Amnesia, you fall and hit your head when you're taking a bath? You don't remember your man? It's a simple thing. See, people are go, you know, the lust of sin, it reaches. And yeah, and Satan reached too. He reached all the way from hell and grabbed you too. Just got to. It's momentary pleasure. Moses denied. He said, I don't want this Pharaoh lifestyle. I'm just going to suffer with y'all. Amen. That's what the Bible says. So they would not. Isn't that sad? It was preached, but they would not hear. They would not listen. But the word of God was unto them. Preach seven from preaching. So he, he Isaiah's breaking it down. He said, okay, yeah, it, it did come out. Subject, the, the context was kept right. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. We, we lined up the scriptures. They were able to see it. Here a little, that little. We showed them from each part. Genesis. We took them over here. Took them over there. Showed them what it was about. But why? That they might go and fall backward. And be broken and snared and taken. So he said we did. He said so here's the result. We break it down line upon line. Heal little down little. Precept upon precept. And two things happen. Either you get healed. Or you fall back and be broken. That's the two things happen. Saints get worse when they hear more gospel. You know that right. Because it breaks you. You get broken. If you're not coming to church. You know you should. So I remember scriptures. Now you can't follow them. And you're broken. You know. By the time you come back in, you're like an old car. Come around the car. Dee, 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 shaking and all. Leaking. You turn it off and it's still running. I had a car like that. You walk up. Going in the car. But it's still running. Just walk on in. It'll eventually cut off. You know, a little fuel in the chamber. It's still running. Though. You got the key in your pocket, man. You know, That needs some work. It needs some work. You know, So there it is. Nevertheless, though. God said his word would teach salvation. Look at Isaiah chapter 2. Verse number 1. The majority of these have come out the Old Testament intentionally. Why? Because didn't he say Moses and the prophet? Look at all this we found in the Old Testament. What's wrong with the rich man? Message from hell. And that's why he in hell. Mm. Isaiah 2 and 1. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos. Saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. And the top of the mountain. And shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say. Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. That we may see the dead men like Lazarus rise up and come and preach. No he didn't say that did he. To the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us from what? Moses and the prophets of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For our Zion shall go forth the Lord. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And so you get to the New Testament. You got Moses. The prophets. And the apostles. And the New Testament prophets. Two more added in. It's enough brother. Don't need a miracle. Jesus said you're blessed. Because you won't get it. You won't see nothing. You know how there's a lot of people baptized and didn't see a miracle? I mean, the eunuch didn't see no miracle. This dude just runs up to him and starts talking. When he gets baptized, the dude gone. He's gone. I said, that wasn't a miracle. It just gone. He might, that could be interpreted. It was a vision. I didn't see nothing. Did nobody do anything before his eyes turned something miraculous? Didn't heal him. Taught him. Baptized. Left him. Uh, it's the word. You have to accept it. God said his word will comfort any problem. Look at 2 Corinthians. Now we're going to go to the New Testament. Chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 1, verse 3. 
Brethren, use the word of God, all right? When people tell you, I just don't understand the Bible, it's too hard. Ask him, what's so hard? Well, it's an old English. Well, you know, thou is just like saying you. Take the T off, off, put a Y, and look at him. What does it mean? Quit you like me, act like a man. Stand like a man. Stand masculine. What quit mean? Old Testament. What else you want to know? I remember one time I was talking to a guy. His life just unraveled before our eyes. He said, I don't understand the language. I took a whole Bible class. And when we were through with that Bible, that one-on-one -on -one teaching, I showed him what each word, thou and you. And he said, I, I understand. I got it. So you got it? So why did he turn and leave and turn to sin? Why? I thought you had it. So, were well, you lying when you said, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm going to get a benefit. You didn't understand that, but you say you got it. No. We took a simple test of reading. You understand that? You got it. You see how it means that? He sinned anyway. So, to him that knoweth to do good and do it to not, to him is a sin. So, there it is. Can you, he won't be able to use that at the judgment. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Look at that. And the God of all comfort. Wow. Who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort where well, we ourselves are comforted of God. So if you were comforted at the loss of a loved one. And you would feel empty and drained. Not someone who's on drugs. You can go to them. And they say well, you know man. I just you know I use these drugs because I feel empty and drained. Why do you feel empty and drained? Well, because you know it's just. I got in this lifestyle because my parents used to get high. And you know I felt they didn't love me. Well you take same comfort God gave you. Same scriptures and get them. They go, but see, you don't know what it's like. Have you ever, have you ever been on hashish? No, but I've been empty. You said you were empty. See, they'll try to get you. Let me tell you something. Some of the biggest deceivers that preach that message from hell that the word is not enough are drug addicts and alcoholics and sexholics. They're big on that. For some reason, they're big on that. You know. Have you ever been that way? Here to go and not get your violin. Not, you know, <laughs> have you ever been found strung at all? You know, that's so rare. His life was so tough. There's just a few people like you, man, never existed. You ever been put out to prostitutes? That's just, man, please. You know, try to pull that card. Mm. No, but I've been lied on. Mm. I received come from the law. That's not the same thing. It is. Take it right to these birds and say, see, I can comfort you with that. Because the law can't let all of us be strung out on dope now. We can't do that. We can't all run women and can't be, we all can't be gold diggers. Somebody got to do something different. So I'm going to take the same comfort and give it to you. See, that's the message from hell. It's the, the word is not enough. It isn't enough. The Bible speaks about old things, archaic, rural things. Nothing about space. What you going to tell a man living in a space station? Tell him you better not be looking at pornography while you're at work in a space station. Mm -hmm. Don't touch yourself while you're at work in a space station. Yeah. You might need to tell him, I need to go back home to my woman. Get me out of here. Mm -hmm. Don't love each other and you're both men in the space station. Mm -hmm. Same doctrine applies. You should have went up there, man. Mm -hmm. I told you go up there. You chose that. It's easy to kill saints. God said my word is good for everything that man needs to be perfect. 2 Timothy 3. Can we validate this? Boss well, got some wicked people in the church of Christ. Some tasks, some the two seeds that finally gave up. They will take your soul in hand and write to the devil. 2 Timothy 3 and 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine... See, he calls it my doctrine. Sometimes you'll say, man, my doctrine, I'm not teaching that. And somebody go, man, it's not your doctrine. It's law. Well, you knew what you mean. You say, yeah, but it's the doctrine I accept. So it's my doctrine. Paul says it's my doctrine. He didn't create it. He just wrote with the Holy Spirit moved in the right. Man of life. You know my life, he tells Timothy. You know I live. You know my purpose. You know my faith. You know my long-suffering. You know of my love, which is charity. You know of my patience. 
You know of my persecutions, verse 11. You know of my afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, where persecution I endured. You know about them. But all of them, all the laws delivered me. You know about that, Timothy. Yea, and all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. He says, he, he says I'm letting you know this, Timothy. Now I'm letting you know this. Tell everybody it's going down if you love Jesus. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse where that looks odd oh, because they look like they gaining ground. Evil men. Deceiving and being. He said, man, man, look like they just step outside. People want to come over there where they at. And there's nothing but a bunch of crooks there. Huh? That's what he says. But continue down the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of. How? Knowing of whom thou hast me. See, I just gave you my list of stuff I went through. I showed you. So you ought to know. If I went through this and I taught these things, he says, this is what you need to remember. What I'm telling you is important. And that from a child, in addition, that thou hast known all the scripture. Holy scripture before you met me, Lois and Eunice taught you, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now he wrote this to a gospel preacher. So we need to take heed. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. For reproof. See that word reproof is so critical. That's what the rich man was lying about. He won't be able to believe unless Lazarus come. No. Paul says so. This includes the new and old. I like this. Thank God. Because people criticize the New Testament. They like the old, but the new they hate. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The teacher ought to be right. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Here's the text. So the message from hell, just as it's taught on earth, is still false like it was back then. The word of God is enough to save souls. It is enough. If you're here now, remember the church, and this is the message. Touch the little triangle. The list of numbers will open up. Show you who to call. The names of where personal cell phones. You can leave a message. Men have dedicated their lives to the Lord. Leaders, different areas, elders, deacons, evangelists, Bible teachers. They'll tell you after you talk to them. The questions answered, when you get those answers, they will direct you to a congregation no matter where you live. If you say, well, I live in Antarctica, I'm in a remote spot working, you know, okay. Well, how y'all get your supplies? They drop them off, okay. You don't think we get somebody? I watch. The guy that's dropping them, he may say, well, you know, I, I am told I can land or not. You know, it's a dude on him telling me about the Bible. I'm a member of the church. Land now, say, okay, y'all gotta get, let's go inside, get some warm water. I wanna dip you in this freezing water. There's nobody on earth that cannot be saved. That's a message from hell. The people in Antarctica don't wanna be saved. That's the problem. Well, we're gonna go to church. Do you wanna be saved? You wanna be baptized? Well, no way you gonna go to church. You don't even wanna be saved. Why would you go to church and you don't wanna be saved? You wanna study the weather. Study it then. That's your thing. Study. But it's hot in hell. We can tell you that one. What's the forecast in hell? Hot. Is the change? None. Amen. So you call a number and the law will guide you to safety. You believe that. If you're here though, you're listening. Same message for you as for them. Recognize that Jesus died, buried, third day rose again. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It is enough to hear that. Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, he that believes, I people sometimes believes what? That gospel, who he is, and is baptized, shall be saved. He that believes not that gospel shall be damned. The Lord is saying, I'm promising you, as I promise salvation, I'm the one that orchestrates who go to hell. I'm putting you in now. Peter preached Acts 2, 37, the faithful Jews who are now not the people of God, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, but can become the people of God. He says to them, they ask, what shall we do? Men and brethren, what do we do now? 
verse 38, Acts chapter 2, repent and be baptized. So you have to change and be baptized. So it isn't something to go do. You change that. Acknowledging, okay, it's the end of Judaism. Okay, so we're going to this new thing now. Be baptized into the name of Jesus, which is to get his character and his authority. What is their blessing? For the remission of sins and to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and all that are fall, even as men of the Lord our God shall come. So why would Joel Osteen and T.D. Dick be preaching something? Because that, you know, it's amazing. You know, somebody tell you my name is not Tom, it's John. You, you wouldn't fight with them. If somebody's telling you by the way they look what they are, why would you think a lady with a dress on, you can clearly see her form, her figure, her legs, her voice, her mannerism, they flow with feminine. Why would you say that's probably a dude? Why would you say that? And someone go, why would you think that? I don't know, man. Well, then why would you think that? There's no inclination. So if a guy comes up looking like a guy, I mean, there's, there's no inclination, no manner, just everything coarse and masculine. Even if his voice is like coarse and masculine mannerisms, readily chivalry toward women, you go, why would you go? Could be a girl. Why would you say that? So why would you think T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen are right against Christ? Seems how they tell you out their mouth. You don't have to be baptized to be saved. Baptism doesn't save. What about the thief on the cross? It's like, man, you didn't think you we you didn't think we knew you was gonna come up with that lie. It's only so many lies the Lord allowed you to have. Satan's briefcase is not that big. He doesn't have that many. And you being his child, through being accepting of his doctrine, you don't get nothing from your father but a few thoughts and you out. So that's what we have to understand. So the message says this is to everybody same message and with many other words that he testified and encouraged them saying save yourself which means they were lost from this other one that means perverted or crooked generation then they they glad to receive his word baptized the same day about 3,000 souls added unto them what they continue the apostles doctrine the fellowship to walk in the light is Christ in the light 1st John chapter 1 Breaking of bread, Acts 27, and prayer, James 5, 17. Why prayer? Because the effectual prayer of righteous avails much. So we got to do that. Pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5. We have to accept that. Acts 2, 5, 7. The Lord added to the church day that such should be saved. When the eunuch is excited about getting baptized, we should never get tired of telling this. He doesn't understand what to do before that point. Philip comes, uses the same scripture, breaks it down. Tells him what this means. Ties in the new with it. When he sees water, he's so well taught. He says, see his water. What the enemy be baptized? Philip says, if you believe with all your heart, you may. He says, I believe what? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Stops the chat. He baptized. Now he's safe. He's safe. That's it. Paul says it happened like that for a reason. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether well, Jew or Gentile, bond or free, and have all been made to drink in one spirit. So the Holy Ghost is doing work. Philip can't sidestep because the Holy Ghost won't touch the soul. The soul can't lie and say it believes and doesn't because you can't fool the spirit. You can't lie to him. See, they lied to Peter in Acts 5 and the saints. Peter said, you didn't lie to us. You lied to the Holy Ghost. That's who telling on you. Because we didn't know until the Holy Ghost told me. They're lying. Call them in. So we have to understand that. It says, 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22, the life figure out that even baptism is also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. We know it's not the water. Some people try to tell you, it's not the water. Like you like, yeah, we knew that one. So what is it? Since you want to answer a question that you're not privy to the knowledge, what is it? All the reason he knows it's not the water, because he understands that you already told him. That baptism is done by the Holy Spirit. He's understanding it's not the water. Do you know why? Because the text says not the filth of the flesh. And the text is telling him not to. He hasn't said anything, but what part doesn't he want? He doesn't want the part that you got to be baptized in water to receive. He doesn't want that part because he's not with Christ. It's like, what else does Jesus have to do 
to help us understand. This is the signal. He can't look at these words and accept the doctrine. What did Jesus tell him at the supper? Drink ye all of it. Now drink all this cup. All this New Testament. He told New Testament, you can't drink some of it, even a little bit. I'm full. No, all of it. Turn the bottom to the top. Like we used to do with them with them 40. I'll turn the bottom to the top like people do. Turn the cup up. Let it all drip down. All oh, the last world of revelation. We may be saved. And we can understand that. Peter says, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven, angels, authorities, and powers being made subject unto him. So Christ says in Revelation 2.10, but the devil shall cast some into prison. Tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful enough day to receive everlasting life. If you can believe that, the Lord will rescue you right now. But if you're here, you're a member of the church, you're in the same shape as you were before if you have sinned. So I have to ask for forgiveness. You might can't tell us. We don't need to know. But the Lord knows and we'll pray with you. You also might just need prayer for strength. Whatever you need, come now. While together we stand and sing Heaven's Invitation. Just as I am without one plea. But that the 